Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I want to show you a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to create an easy DIY seamless lay flat photo book or photo album. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so and make sure to check the notifications bell to never miss a new video. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please give us a like. So in the past, I've shown you quite a few tutorials now on how to create a booklet style photo book, a hardcover, a sewn photo book, and also a Japanese style photo book. Today, I'm going to show you something more elegant that you can use for a wedding album or uh, anything that requires a seamless lay flat binding. Now, when it comes to lay flat book, there are two kinds. Many books can open completely flat, but there's still going to be a little break in the middle because it's made up of two separate pages. And what we call seamless lay flat is when you have a completely uninterrupted double page spread where the photos start on the left side and end on the right side page without any break in the middle. Photo book companies usually achieve this result by printing your pages as double page spreads and then sticking the pages to each other or mounting them on a board for flush mount albums. This might seem very difficult to do at home because um, when it comes to photo book companies, there are machines like the Fastbook system, which does that automatically really quickly. So nothing can go really wrong. But I actually found a, a method that you can do at home and it's actually very straightforward and easy and it gives you the same kind of look and you can do it yourself. So let's dive in. So let's see what you'll need. The absolute essentials for this project are some kind of paper to print on and the thicker paper the better so I would advise at least 120 GSM paper because when you stick it together it's going to be thicker anyway, at least double thickness because it's a seamless lay flat book. You will need double sided self adhesive sheet which can be plastic or paper, it doesn't matter, almost like a double sided tape but it's a sheet and you are also going to need a trimming device so either a guillotine, a trimming machine or just a ruler and a sharp knife. Now depending on the cover that you choose for this book you can either make it a soft cover in which case you don't need anything else. If you want to make it a hard cover you're going to need uh, some kind of board to mount the cover material on and the cover material could be paper or could be linen but it's completely optional you can make your lay flat book a soft cover book as well. And of course, you'll need a printer to print out your images and some kind of a software to design it. And if you make a photo album, you can do it in any software really. Uh, and it doesn't need to be a booklet format. We can just print the sheets one sided. So let's start with the design process. So once again, I'm using Affinity Publisher to edit this book. But as I said, you can use any simple editor because the lay flat albums are much easier to edit than section sewn photo books or booklets. So I'm going to create a new document, which is going to be A4 size because that's going to be the two sides together and it's going to be landscape and I'm not going to click on the facing pages because it doesn't need to be facing pages. Okay, now the only thing I'm going to change here in my master page is my margins. My printer cannot print the outer four millimeters of the paper and I want my pictures to be full bleed. So that needs to be trimmed off. So I'm going to add a seven millimeter margin to every side. And that's gonna show me the area that I will need to trim off to make sure that on every edge, uh, the photo is going to go all the way to the edge of the paper. Now, if you don't want your photos to go full bleed and you are happy with a, a wide border around, then you don't need to do this bleed at all. You can just uh, print out your pages as they are. So that's how I set up my paper. And I'm also going to add a guide, which is going to be the middle of the paper just to see where is my right side and where is my left side. By the way, this photo book is going to be A5 size. So it's an A4 paper and when it's folded into two, it's A5 and portrait. So quite a small one. Now, if I start my first page, let's just do a quick title, Hong Kong, my usual favorite, Dido. Make it a little bit bigger, subtitles. Let's make that even here, a little bit more spaced out. There we go. So that's fine for a title. And I'm going to create a few more pages, maybe 10 more using the same master page A. And what you need to know about the bleed is that if I want my photo to go from edge to edge, 
I have to create a photo frame which is until the edge of the paper and then this bleed section is going to be trimmed off. So this is a very simple design in Layflat. Uh, photo book albums, you just basically put big pictures, two or three on a page, and sometimes you can do something more creative, like just uh, a few more bigger ones, smaller ones scattered around, so something like that. And then these are the other um, layouts that I created here. I added some titles here and there using the same font as uh, on the front cover. Two photos, five and a bigger collage or montage. So that's really all about the design process. And then the most important thing is when you print out this book, it has to be single sided because the left side is going to always be stuck to the previous double page spread. We're going to fold them into two and stick them to each other, almost like an accordion. To print my pages, I'm using my Xerox press printer. And as you can see, it's really fast. So it only takes a few seconds to get this short book out. And then I'm also going to print the cover. Just a quick double check through the pages to make sure I've got all of them, put them in order. Now I'm going to use a bone folder to fold the pages into two. Now it's important to fold them so that the printed side is on the inside. Now, as you see, when I'm folding this, unfortunately, I didn't know that the silk uh, satin paper is not going to fold so well. So it created a little crease mark in the middle, but never mind. next time I know to use a different kind of paper. So just be careful with that when you fold your pages. If you don't have a bone folder, you can also use your fingers, by the way. Now the next stage is the hardest and longest one. So in order to stick these pages together and not use glue, I bought these uh, self-adhesive sheets, which are basically very thin film that are sticky on both sides and there is a little extra film on each side that you can peel off. Now the good thing about these is that it's quite easy to apply, but <laughs> it was quite tricky to actually peel off the, the film from the outside. They come in A4 sheets and I got them from Amazon. I'm sure there's a professional way of getting them much cheaper and in much bigger quantities, but if it's just for a one-off project like this one, then the Amazon one is gonna be perfect for that. Then I cut them into A5 sheets, so just half them to make sure it fits my book. And now I peel off the first edge and I carefully roll on my first page. Now obviously if you have a roller here it's going to be a big help but I just use my hands and I managed to get it without any air bubbles nice and smooth and again don't worry too much about the edges because we're going to trim it. Now once one page is done you're going to peel off the other side and attach the next page and just make sure you check the orientation to make sure it's not upside down and carefully again roll it onto the next page and now the two pages should be stuck. Smooth it down with your hands and then place another sheet of uh, self-adhesive film on the back side of the next page and so on until you get to the very last page. Now the only problem with this is if you make a mistake towards the end and you manage to get air bubbles or something gets pulled, then you have to start from the beginning. So you have to be very careful when you put this film on to make sure that it's nice and flat. And as we finished sticking the pages, now you can start paging through the book and you can see it opens fully lay flat and it's seamlessly flat. So the sticking process is done. I printed out my cover, which is the same as the first page of the book on a linen textured cardstock. I'm not going to make a hardcover book here, but if you want to make it hardcover, you can do that. I have a tutorial on how to make a hardcover finish. Uh, you can watch that. There's going to be a link in the description below. So once my page printed out, I'm going to use my easy score board to put some score lines into it so it's nicer when it folds. Again, this is not strictly necessary. You can easily get away without putting score lines into the 
cover sheet, but it just makes it look much neater and nicer. I'm going to put two crease lines into the middle for the spine and then two extra crease lines or score lines outside the spine lines one centimeter away because that's where the, the cover is going to be stuck or glued to the inside pages. So once I'm done with that, I'm going to put the cover onto the inside pages, just make sure it fits and it's nice and snug and flush against the pages. And then I'm going to position it in the right placement and put some glue onto the inside edge of the page. Now here, um, you can use PVA glue. I'm using a stick glue because it's just easier and less messy. And in my experience, it works just as well. I'm using a scrap sheet just to make sure that the glue doesn't bleed further on than it needs to. So I'm going to do like one centimeter strip on the inside pages, put the glue on and then stick the cover on. Press it down firmly and use my bone folder for that. And then I'm going to turn around to the other side, do the same, put a one centimeter strip of glue and press it firmly on, use my bone folder and put some heavy weights on for a little while, a few minutes, just to make sure the glue really sticks on and the cover doesn't move. So once the glue dried, I'm going to trim my book. Now again, this is optional. You can leave it untrimmed if you don't mind the very handmade look, but I would strongly suggest to trim it because it's a much nicer and neater look. If you don't have a guillotine, the one I'm using here, then you can use a ruler and a very sharp knife as well. It works just as well, but it takes a little bit longer. You have to press down the ruler very strong and be very patient with the knife and just do it in many uh, strokes after each other. So first I'm doing the long edge. And as you could see on my printed sheets, I had a wide border because my printer cannot print the outer four millimeters. It's not a full bleed printer. And that's why my trimming basically has two purposes. One to make it look more neat and the second to get rid of the, the bleed area. And there we go, here is the finished book, nothing else to add. Um, as you can see, the texture of the front cover and the book opens fully flat all the way through and it's an uninterrupted flow of the pages from left to right. It's an amazing, easy way to create a lay flat book. It's obviously a little bit tedious when you do your sticking, but if you like the lay flat book and the lay flat look, it's definitely worth trying out. I wouldn't suggest doing something like 100 pages because if you do 98 pages and on the 99th page you get an air bubble or something gets messy with the glue, or, or the self-adhesive sheet, you're going to be very mad to have to start it again from the beginning. But for a shorter book or a little wedding album, I think it's an amazing project to spend time on. So this was my tutorial on lay flat, seamless lay flat photo books. I hope you found this useful and now you can probably try to make your own at home. Thank you very much for watching and as always, subscribe for more.